Gazi Dons Rio, you just go in on you and that just go in a star on a thought room. They didn't know what I do, Gurunga Gori, I guess so. Yet he sought to ask the Tonka Garako than a Yetimis Dons, you hunt Zagi than a great Scott me, the long way. They didn't know what I do, a great Jimmy Ganyak de Gerda than a great bull or no for soup. They didn't know what I do, yet he sought to come home there on the heads and the gun to go here at the power. Yung Fiat again, down the way on the Hatsura does it stasser and make a needle. Down the way on the Hatsura and a grey go on a board and a grey on a rest of the board and a scanner done a begging idea hard day. So, like usual, we always begin by identifying who we are and I identify myself as the Zitons Ryu. This is the name my mother has given me, and when she was alive in this world, she carried the sacred title of Wolf Clan Mother into one. Bonsoir tout le monde, comme on fait à chaque soirée qu'on se rassemble dans le jour de travail du monde du droit, on commence à dire c'est qui qu'on est, donc Gatine Salibé se présente, il mentionne son nom, et le fait qu'il est le fils de qui portait le nom en vie de Garon et Moudi, qui était là de la femme chef du plan du loup, de la nation Gagnon Gafalga de l'Europe. Et donc, si je identifie ma mère, je m'identifie uh my clan my lineage and so whenever i speak after identifying my mother i will speak with respect i have to do justice to my mother's bloodline et puis si je suis en train de parler uh, de la lignée de sang de ma mère il faut que mes mots soient juste ce que je lui rends and so uh from there we always identify we give thanks to uh, the great spiral of creation and we give thanks to her sky woman as it is she who is given us spirit. Et donc on commence à remercier la grande spirale de la création qui est la femme ciel qui nous donne notre ciel. And from there we give our thanks <coughs> to the beating heart of our mother earth, to our grandmother moon, as it is she who gives us blood. Et de là nous remercions notre grandmama lune qui est le cœur battant de notre mère terre qui nous donne notre sang, mon dos. From there, we give our thanks to our Mother Earth, regardless what color we are, what language we speak, where we come from. We all come from the same Mother, and we give thanks to her as it is she who has given us body. From there, we give our thanks to all the women from the newest born to all the life givers. From the newest born baby girl to the oldest grandmother, as they carry the sacred title of life giver into the world and are to be honored for this, we give thanks to them, as in this world they give us direction. Uh, purpose and direction. Very important. Uh, from there, we give our thanks to all the waters, all the shapes and forms they come in, to all the medicines, all the shapes and forms they come in, and then to our ancestors who carry the good mind, and we ask them to help us, show us how to bring our mothers back to their natural seat of authority within all our nations so they can manage our peoples properly once again. Toutes les autres et toutes les médecines, et on demande aussi le bon esprit de nos ancêtres, pour que le bon esprit est qui nous aide à grandir le véritable pouvoir de nos mères parmi nous. And what? Oh yeah, 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 okay. We ask them to help us to bring back the true spirit of every one of them, of the great law of peace in its entirety. To back to the minds of the people, and also the true spirit of the dead in the Ahabi back to the minds of the people. Mm, I think that's pretty much all what I said. We always try to give it as brief as possible. But even uh, when you're being brief, you have to include everything uh, in a nutshell. 
This is the reason why uh, the words that are spoken are chosen very carefully. As a male, as a guy, I, excuse me, I have to honor my mother. And to do this, I have to uh, carry my mother's message into the world. And anybody, you might think, uh, well, what's your mother's message? Did your, mo did your mother ever actually give you a message to say, carry this forward into the world? Your mother's message is the way that she lived in this world, the way that she conducted herself, the way that she taught you. Can anybody hear us? Anybody? Anyone? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay. Something just happened to both our computers here. Mm -hmm. Probably the internet connection that's uh, full. If you have a lot of computers connected on it, it's because of that, probably. Uh -huh. You could unconnect your phones and uh, tablets and all this stuff and just uh, let the two computers uh, on the, the Wi-Fi, it, it will help. Okay, we're going to have to take a couple of minutes. We'll be right back to make sure everything is... We do like what you just said. What is this now here on the computer? It's, okay. it's Facebook Live that has been... Yeah, but look what is that. What do I do with that? Okay, you check it out. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna also log up from Zoom. Sorry, but too many of us on here. Just for a little while. Are you staying here? Okay, well, maybe those. It'd be better if you stay down with me. Well, I'm not kicking you off, but get out of here. Okay, so thank you for your patience. We are just disconnecting now because we were a lot <laughs> on the same internet connection, so we're just like uh logging everything off and using the bare minimum so we can continue. Donc, euh, merci de votre patience parce qu'effectivement, on était plusieurs à être euh, sur la même connexion Internet, donc on essaie juste de euh, déconnecter tout ce qu'on ne peut pas, euh, besoin et avoir juste le minimum nécessaire, donc euh, ça sera pas long. OK, well, I just had to kick my kids out. <laughs> Hurry up and get out of here. <laughs> We're all mad. Yeah, yeah. Him, oh. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Oh, no. Okay. Um, where were we? What were we talking about? Uh, oh, the mother's message. Okay. So your mother's message is what she taught you. Uh, the way that she was in the world, what she showed you. And so for me, everything that we talk about 
everything that you see, uh, what we post, uh, uh, anybody else who knows us, uh, everything that we do, this is my mother's message. Donc, pour moi, tout ce qu'on fait, tout ce que vous voyez, tout ce que nous faisons, c'est exactement ça, le message de ma mère. So, you may not realize, but your mother has a message that she passes on to you. Donc, il se peut que vous ne vous rendiez pas compte, mais votre maman a un message qui vous a passé à vous. Of course, there is the physical side, you know, sort of like muscle memory in the body. Of course, she passes on the message of... Uh, Uh, life uh, to reproduce. But if it was just the physical of reproduction, then uh, you know eventually uh, it could become um, what's the word I'm looking for here? It could become like a poisoned uh, message. It could eventually just die off. Mais si c'était juste le message de la reproduction, il se pourrait qu'éventuellement, ça serait juste un message qui euh, mourrait, qui serait comme un poison même. But the spiritual side, which is not muscle memory, which you are in charge of, which you are in control of. Mais le côté spirituel, que c'est celui dont vous êtes en charge, qui n'est pas seulement physique. It's also like a muscle that you have to exercise. If your mother has passed from this world, like mine, my mother's been gone for 30 years now. Uh, then you have to think. Sometimes you have to remember. What was it that your mother showed you? And sometimes you might not even remember anything. There might not be anything that you can think of that, that your mother passed on to you. And you all know this. Uh, within uh, the generation, sometimes, uh, let's say, a hair color skips a couple of couple of generations. Vous savez, par exemple, génétiquement parlant, parfois les générations vont sauter, admettons, une couleur de cheveux, de cheveux va um, sauter de deux générations. So it's the same thing with the spiritual uh, message that your mother gives to you or passes on to you. Donc c'est la même chose avec le côté spirituel, le message que vous donne. Is that it could be gone from a couple of generations, like your, your mother may not have ever passed anything to you. Or so you think, but it is in the bloodline. The message is from maybe the generation before or two generations prior. And this is where you got to exercise, just like exercise your mind, just like the same way you exercise the muscles in your body. Et c'est là où vous devez exercer le, le muscle de votre mémoire, aussi bien que vous exercez les muscles de, la, de, de votre corps. To think of, to remember, to get back a uh, uh, certain goodness that was in our bloodline. Afin que vous vous souveniez de faire revenir des bontés qui se trouvaient dans notre ligne de sang. And so this is how we do honor to our mother's bloodline, is to remember our mother, to remember, maybe it was just, uh, you remember your grandmother making the best apple pies ever. Then you can pass that message on. Not necessarily that you personally are going to bake apple pies, but that you can bring that back Quite simply, just by speaking of it. I remember when I was a kid, uh, my mother raised me, and I was always with my aunts, my grandmother, my grandmother, and uh, other uh, women of the extended family in the long house. And I remember different things from all of them. 
And so sometimes, uh, if I'm in ceremony, I'll, I'll speak of uh, something that I remembered from my grandmother or my aunt or one of the extended family. And so by speaking of it, it might not be physically brought back in my generation, it might be brought back in my children's or my grandchildren. Donc en parlant de ça, il se peut que euh, ce souvenir-là ne se matérialise pas dans ma génération, mais peut-être chez mes enfants ou mes petits-enfants. But uh, just a little while ago, uh, we were very fortunate. Uh, we received their visitor from across the, uh, across the Great Waters, Elizabeth Neefsley. Is it Neefsley or Neefsley? Elizabeth? Donc, euh, on est vraiment chanceux parce que euh, ça fait pas longtemps qu'on vient de recevoir notre visite de l'autre côté de l'océan et son nom Merci. est Elisabeth Nifsley. Donc, euh, c'est ce temps que tu dis, Elisabeth? Is it Nifsley with an L? Nifsley, yeah. Nifsley, yeah. yeah. Anyways, okay. We just got here uh, today. Uh, she made a big trip across the Great Waters and uh, she was here for the, uh, the, the, the law recital for the Women's Nation. And we had a ceremony to welcome here, her here, uh, a two row wampum ceremony. And this was to acclimatize her here to the different polarity that she's in now. You know, imagine uh, a flashlight uh, with batteries you got to put in it. You know, the battery has to be a certain way. The positive and the negative has to be a certain way within uh, the flashlight. Donc, par exemple, vous avez une lampe de poche, il faut que vous mettiez les batteries, il faut euh, assurer le que vous mettiez le bon côté des batteries, le positif, négatif, pour que ça fonctionne. Now, if you put the polarities wrong, well, the flashlight wouldn't work. Parce que si vous placez les polarités inversées, mais ça ne va pas fonctionner, votre lampe de poche. And this is what has been here uh, in Turtle Island now for generations, for hundreds of years. People who are dysfunctioning under the, the wrong polarity because the polarities are backwards. Because of the way the crazy relations uh, turned out here, uh, the way that the non-native people have been living, they have forgotten that they're not in their own polarity. And all the non-native people are just uh, functioning or dysfunctioning because of their polarity being reversed. So in the ceremony, the, wel the welcoming ceremony that we've done for Elizabeth, we identified to her that uh, our future lies in our past. And uh, of course, this is the future of all people's honor. Our future, if we are going to have a future, it lies in our past. And so, uh, where, what is the uh, place or time of importance in our past is where we came together and instead of coming together in the right way, meshing together, we came together in an act of violence. 
comme comment ça s'est produit, c'est qu'à la place de venir ensemble de façon harmonieuse pour complètement fusionner ensemble, on l'a fait de façon confrontationnelle, violente. And that is because, in the non-native world, uh, you're male dominant. So being male dominant is a reversal of your polarity, even while you were at home in your homelands, your polarity was reversed. Ça, c'est à cause que vous faites de la domination masculine et que la domination masculine implique justement un revirement des polarités et même étant chez vous de l'autre côté de l'océan, ces polarités ont été renversées là-bas. So, when you think of humans, uh, our creation process is rooted in love, the act of love between uh, a woman and a man. Uh, are, while we are babies, we are nurtured through love. Uh, we're taught through love. Our existence is love. Donc, quand on pense à notre vie, on pense à la relation, par exemple, entre une femme et un homme qui va créer la vie. Ça vient de l'amour. Quand on est des petits bébés et qu'on va grandir, ça va être aussi l'amour qui va faire en sorte qu'on évolue, qu'on grandisse. Donc, tout à la base, ce qui nous nourrit vient de l'amour. But as you know, in the non-native world, there was a huge corruption thousands of years ago that uh, broke your love, turning uh, everyone, uh, causing everyone to exist under the rule of war, of under male dominance. Mais comme vous le savez, dans votre histoire, du côté de notre personne, ça a été quelque chose de violent qui a déchiré votre amour, qui a cassé en deux, qui a fait en sorte à partir de là, les relations soient pas harmonieuses, voire And so a little over 500 years ago, when, when the non-native's ancestors came from across the great waters and stepped foot here, there was no women. There was no life givers that were there. It was all just men. It was all pirates that came here. So from your, the society of the non-native people across the great waters, you actually sent war here to our people, to our land. Donc, quand les gens autochtones sont venus mettre le pied ici sur l'île de la tortue, ils ne sont pas venus avec des femmes, c'était juste des hommes qui ont été envoyés, c'était juste des pirates. Donc, en fait, quand ils sont venus ici, vos premiers représentants ont amené la guerre. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that love cannot exist where war is, because war, in order for it to exist, love is uh, pushed away. Et ça ne prend pas une super grand-mère connaissante pour deviner que si on n'a pas de l'amour, en fait, s'il y a de la guerre, on ne peut pas avoir de l'amour parce que c'est justement l'amour qui se fait repousser avec la guerre. So for hundreds of years, here, in Turtle Island, it has been the wrong relationship because of the people not understanding polarities. Donc, euh, ça fait plus de 500 ans que ces relations ici ne sont pas dans la bonne correspondance à cause que les gens ne comprennent pas la question de la polarité. Not understanding opposites. La question d'opposés. And how they are to interact with one another. Et comment ils sont supposés d'interagir l'un avec l'autre. There's an interface between opposites. Il y a une interface entre les opposés. And that interface is what allows the opposites to communicate, to be able to exist in the same space and time together. So in, in the welcoming ceremony that we've done with Elizabeth, we, again, we identified to her that our future, if we are to have a future as humanity, in order to advance, The solution to the, the, the insanity that's plaguing this world lies in the past. Donc on a mentionné dans la ceremony d'accueil qu'on a fait pour Elisabeth que s'il y a un futur que nous allons avoir, euh, la réponse, en fait, qu'est-ce qui s'est passé à notre humanité, euh, repose dans notre passé. Well, we said to her, imagine if when she was getting on the plane to come here, imagine if she got on the wrong plane and she went to Japan. Well, she would get in Japan expecting to be here, expecting certain things, looking for us, but she would end up in Japan meeting somebody else 
doing something else. So you got to think, what would the solution be to that dilemma? Well, the solution would be uh, to go back to where you got on the wrong plane. Get on the right plane and you end up where you're supposed to be. Um, in the last, uh, well, for some years now, but in the last couple of weeks, it's really been uh, coming like a wave over us uh, working with uh, children, school, school kids. Et ça fait quelques années qu'on y travaille, mais là, durant les dernières semaines, c'est vraiment devenu comme une espèce de vague, le fait de travailler avec des enfants de partout. Et les enfants nous apprennent tellement. Moi, je dis que les enfants sont beaucoup plus intelligents que les adultes. Parce que les enfants peuvent identifier ce que le problème est, mais les adultes... They won't even acknowledge that there is a problem. But the kids have been expressing to us when they when they come here to to our property, they express to us their fears, and it's all about war and bloodshed. Most of you think that, well, the young boys in particular today, they love playing these uh, video games that are all about war. So most of you would think that the young boys would be of a war mentality. La plupart d'entre vous auraient la tendance à penser que puisque les enfants, et surtout les petits garçons, vont jouer avec, euh, admettons, des jeux de guerre, des soldats, des tanks, des armées, tout ça, il y aurait ton, euh, tendance à aimer la guerre, mais ce n'est pas vraiment ça le cas. But they are not. C'est pas le cas. They are exposed to these video games that, remember, kids do not create these video games. It's adults that create these video games and they just shove it upon the children. So it's basically not true. The little boys do not like war. They do not want war. You know, I don't like liver, but if uh, you kept me in a cage and every day you just kept feeding me liver, I'm going to have to eat liver. And after a while, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow to like it. Or I might even expand on the recipe, maybe improve it, and you would end up thinking, hey, look, this guy likes liver. When I don't like liver. Just as these young boys today, they don't like war, they don't want war, but it's what the adults are feeding them through video games, through movies, through attitude, through the message that adults are passing to children, they're passing a message of war to children. But we're so fortunate that we get to speak with these children and when they are here, uh, they find that they have a voice that these, the children are listened to here. Where if, if you are an adult, let's say you're a parent and your kids come home in the evening, 
and you talk to them, you may think you're talking to them, you're not. It's a superficial communication that's taking place. Alors que vous avez aussi vous avez des amis, vous avez des parents, vous avez des enfants, ils arrivent à la maison, vous allez avoir une conversation, peut-être que vous pensez que vous parlez de vraies affaires, mais c'est pas vrai, vous parlez des choses en surface. There was a young man that was here last uh, Thursday, last Thursday. Il y avait un petit garçon, un jeune homme qui était là uh, jeudi passé. I don't know, maybe some of you have seen uh, the video of it posted on Facebook. It was a young man in our TV talking in a, in a talking circle there. Anyways, we did not offer a superficial communication with this young man. We offered the space for him in which to speak where he could be heard on what he finds of importance. Then he expressed to us, if you've seen the video, it was... It was really shocking. It was really uh, a good slap in the face to see this young man talking about the craziness of war and what war is doing to, to the minds of the children. Si vous regardez la vidéo, vous pouvez voir que ce jeune homme, c'est comme s'il nous venait vraiment une claque sur la face en parlant de toute la violence de la guerre et de la corruption. In the video, you could see it's almost like as if you were like he was possessed, like he was channeling the spirit or something. Anyways, at the end, if, if you've seen uh, the video posted on, on my page, uh, at the end, he says that the world is just taking a bath in human blood. Donc, si vous voyez la vidéo euh, à la fin, quand il termine, il dit que le monde est juste en train de prendre un bain de sang. So, your children are coming here to speak with us. They're coming here to have their voice heard. Donc, vos enfants viennent ici pour nous parler et pour qu'il y ait leur voix entendue. For some reason, you may think you're hearing your children, but for some reason, their voice is not heard in the non-native world. Which is, of course, a crime. We got to think, who is committing that crime? Is it the kids? Of course, it's the adults. So I told all those kids, he says, you know what? I prefer to speak to you. I don't like to talk to adults because now I know talking to adults, it's like a complete waste of time. Because adults just stay locked in the train of thought that has been injected into their minds. But uh, I said to this young man after he was done talking, uh, uh, I identified that uh, he found his power now, and his power is his voice. And once you find your power, you have to exercise that. Because all of us, each of us, have been given a power with a polarity. So if we are connected properly to the proper polarity, then our power, our voice, will be exercised. It will be heard. Et si nous sommes correctement connectés à notre polarité, à ce moment-là, notre voix va se faire entendre. So this young man, there was two young men actually, that uh, really stuck out to me and I told the board of them, this is your power, your voice is your power, exercise it. The people need to hear your power. 
Et donc, ce jeune homme-là, puis après, il y avait un autre, c'était ces deux jeunes garçons à qui je leur ai dit, c'est votre voix qui est votre pouvoir, donc, pour chercher. So, your children are coming here to find their voice, coming here to find their power. Donc, vos enfants viennent ici pour exercer leur voix et trouver leur pouvoir. And here, they're safe, they're protected. Ici, ils sont en sécurité, ils sont protégés. When we go out there uh, to see the, the, the students, it's uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Thursdays they come here. Nous allons voir les enfants à, à Montréal les mardis et les mercredis. C'est les jeudis qui viennent ici. When we're out there, we were there today, uh, you can see there's a difference in them than when they are here. Et quand nous sommes là-bas, vous pouvez voir qu'il y a une différence alors que quand ils sont ici. When they're here, they're more uh, respectful, they're more better. They're just better human beings when they're here. Quand ils sont ici, ils se comportent mieux, c'est comme s'ils étaient plus respectueux, c'est comme s'ils étaient juste des meilleurs êtres humains. Because that's what's nurtured here. Parce que c'est ça ce qui est nourri ici. But when they're out there, you can see the difference in them, their attitudes, the way that they... Uh, don't pay attention to the adults the way that they just do what they want. That is because that is what is promoted in your children. In the non-native society, this is what is being promoted in them. They're being taught how to be bullies. They're being taught how to be disrespectful. They're being taught All the worst things you could imagine. But when, when they are here, you can see how respectful they are. They listen, they're attentive, they, if you ask them to do something, they'll do it very uh, willingly. So, your children are coming here to have their voice heard. They're coming here to exercise their power. And of course, that's a very important thing. But then there are some adults who will become uh, angry or put off with that because uh, the kids don't talk out there on the levels that they do here and the parents become offended by that. This is where We really have to listen to the message that our mothers give to us. Because the message my mother has given me tells me something very specific. In particular, when we, when we speak of the Degeni Diyahari, the two low wampum, it tells me something very precise about the non-native children. En particulier, quand nous parlons du wampum et du bois, ça nous dit quelque chose de très spécial par rapport aux enfants de cette famille. Because of the two low wampum, we have a treaty of alliance. That means when you need help, I am bound to help you. When I need help, you are supposed to be bound to help me. C'est que à cause de ce traité d'alliance, justement, si vous avez besoin d'aide, moi je suis obligé de vous aider et tant que vous avez besoin de l'aide, je vous suis. Tant que j'ai besoin d'aide, vous êtes obligé de m'aider. So, when I'm walking by your house, I hear the children in your house crying. Et moi, quand je marche par votre maison, j'entends les enfants qui pleurent. The same, the way that what I described about how this young man that was here was expressing it. All his fear is about the craziness of war in the world. So when I'm walking by your house and I hear the children crying in your house, 
I have to listen to the voice of your children, not to you, because you are an adult and you are the one that's supposed to be taking care of your children, but are not. So when I hear your children crying, I am bound by that treaty of alliance to go and assist, even though the parents may be too dumb to give a damn even about what is happening to their children. Donc, quand tu sais vos enfants qui pleurent, ce n'est pas les adultes à qui tu dois écouter, c'est les enfants, parce que si je passe par votre maison, ce sont vos enfants qui pleurent et que vous êtes l'adulte, ça veut dire que vous êtes en train de faire quelque chose qui fait pleurer vos enfants là. Donc, si les parents ne se rendent pas compte, si ils sont peut-être trop nombreux pour s'en apercevoir, moi, il faut pareil que j'aide ces enfants là, parce que je suis obligée par le traité d'alliance à le faire. Anyways, this is the message that my mother has given me. She's taught me to be this way, to follow in her footsteps. My mother, like your mother, like any mother, loves their children. They are supposed to love all children, look out for and protect all children of this world. Et ma mère, comme toute la mère, aime ses enfants, mais comme toute la mère, elle est censée de aimer tous les enfants du monde, donc de les protéger également. And so I can say that by being uh, aware, being cognizant of what my mother's message is, that I can carry that message into the world, and I can see the truth and the power of my mother's message in the non-native children, Who are responding to. Donc, je peux dire que je peux véritablement voir comment que je suis le message de ma mère et quand que je le suis et je le présente à ses enfants dans la famille, je vois comment que ce message grandit chez eux. So, we're very lucky, like I said, that in the last little while, this has really been uh, snowballing, really, uh, compared to. Uh, The, sh the teachings that we were doing last year with, children, with the school children, this year it's, it's, it's exponentialized. Now, our message didn't change from last year, so why is it exponentializing now? It's because the craziness of the adults is exponentializing. And so your children's pain will increase, will exponentialize also. And so this is where now we find ourselves. I find my mother's message. Finding the ear that will listen. Not in the adults. It's in the children. Because all the children that we are speaking to are all identifying, again, the craziness of war in this world. The kids identify that it is criminal, it's criminal conduct to make weapons. But yet, you know, every country on earth is manufacturing weapons. And if they're not fabricating them, they're buying them. If you buy weapons, or if you fabricate weapons, you are misusing the lives of your children. And you adults, or the adults, just don't seem to give a good goddamn about it. But I watch your children crying over this. And so uh, I am compelled to share my mother's message with them. 
forcer ou les vieilles de doigts partager le message de manière avec And it's been so out of this world amazing. It's the greatest work we've ever done. Because when you can see in a child who is first, a male child who is first acclimatized to war through video games, movies, all that stuff. When you see the twinkle in the eye of that little boy, when he hears of love and hears of the practical ways that love is to be applied in this world, that little boy's mind opens up. And what I see is all the young girls, the little, uh, the young life givers that are with them, they then change in relation to those young boys. They look at them differently. Almost like as if these young girls, maybe before, didn't trust them, and then all of a sudden they look at the young boys and they do not trust them. Comme si avant, ils pouvaient peut-être pas leur faire confiance, puis là, maintenant, du coup, ils peuvent songer à leur faire confiance. So, uh, in the past uh, three weeks, it's really been a mind-blowing experience working with these children, these young people. Dans les trois dernières semaines, ça a été vraiment une expérience complètement incroyable, le fait de travailler avec ces jeunes humains. It has... Uh, made me understand a lot of things. But also with the adults that we do talk to, it's made me see now within you these children. Not that I'm seeing you as children, but that I see the uh, uh, the want or the desire in the in the children for love and peace in the world. You see that in the the, the, the non-native people that we work with. There's only one problem. As you know, in the non-native society, there are no mechanisms for you to attain peace. There really is no avenues or mechanisms for uh, uh, exercising, finding and exercising your individual power. No, you can say that's not true because a lot of people are artists, a lot of people are pursuing their dreams in whatever field. So these are all areas, no matter what, within the realm of war. So an artist. Imagine, uh, let's compare an artist to a lover. If you're in the time of war, a lover can only uh, experience love to a certain degree because they're surrounded by war. So you know that war um, cancels out the love. So a lover really in a world of war, is only the illusion of a lover. But imagine that artist or that lover in a world 
where there is no war. Well, that artist or that lover may create completely different works of art or may love in a completely different way. In a way that he, you, you could never know while being in the world of war. So this is where we identified to Elizabeth and we identified this to everybody that our future as a species, if we are going to have a future, it lies in the past where love was the rule, not war. So anyways, while we're on this uh, topic, uh, this last Peter, if uh, you want to relate anything of what you've been experiencing with the kids in the past couple of weeks. Donc là, pendant que vous venez, je vous demanderais peut-être les deux si vous partagez quelque chose par rapport à ce qu'on a expérimenté durant ces dernières trois semaines. Yes, well, so not to continue being a bit worse, but that experience with those boys was being completely out of any other experience that we had with the kids. And it personally touched me a lot. I was just like crying. I couldn't stop. It was something that it was an emotion that was coming out. And uh, I really think that that those two boys were changed forever. It's like if I could see it, and they were living, they were living, like, they were just in Texas Stewart, and they were just like they were there. You know, they were like we are here with you for peace. Like you could really see on their eyes. So that was a beautiful experience. Donc, euh, c'est sûr que c'est pas pour continuer à répéter, mais juste de réitérer que l'expérience avec ces deux jeunes garçons la semaine passée a été vraiment une expérience complètement incroyable que euh, j'avais jamais vécue avec une expérience avec des enfants. Puis j'ai vraiment pu voir dans leurs yeux euh, qu'il y avait quelque chose qui avait été changé. Puis même que, euh, quand ils partaient, ils étaient vraiment comme juste à côté de Stuart l'un de l'autre. Puis ils étaient vraiment comme si c'était comme oui, oui, et là, on est là, on est avec toi, avec la fille, là, on va le faire. Là, c'est comme une partie a été vraiment changée. And then yesterday, um, uh, sometimes, you know, when Seward like, gets like too much or something, I will come in and I help him and I'm talking a little bit about what I have learned. And uh, it was funny because uh, I was uh, just trying to ask them again, you know, what is, uh, what is his name? Because he will say that Sina Sahiyu, but of course everybody will forget what's his name. And then, uh, anyways, I just said the name and I uh, asked the, the people, like the, the real people, Uh, what do you think that means to give a guess? And there's somebody, a girl, that said, I think it's peace. And then another girl said, I think it's peacemaker. So he had never spoken about a peacemaker or the Galamida or anything at all like that, but the girls just by what he speaks, like how he speaks, were already calling him like peace or peacemaker. So it's just like they are so not used to having this speech of peace that were never presented to them, they needed to get something that they have not heard or that's something that they are not used to. And it immediately impregnates them and I would say every molecule of, of their, their body. So that's really, uh, you can see the transformation or the, the clicking in all of their spirit that is happening at the time. So, uh, oui, hier, ça a été aussi, uh, si on va annuler, mais parfois, si uh, il y en a beaucoup, ou peut-être que je vais pouvoir comme à uh, une autre qui a un petit peu, puis hier, j'ai uh, juste réitéré à uh, surtout aux jeunes filles qui étaient là, c'est quoi son nom? Parce que parfois, il va mentionner son nom, c'est Gatti Dancelio. Ben oui, mais il n'y a personne qui va se rappeler de ça. Donc, il uh, dit Gatti Dancelio, ça veut dire quoi dans la langue? Qu'est-ce que vous pensez, les filles? Là, il y a une fille qui a dit Ah, oh, ben, je pense que ça voudrait dire paix. Et là, il y a une autre fille qui a dit Ah, ben, je pense que ça voudrait dire c'est lui qui fait la paix. Donc, si vous n'avez pas parlé du tout de Deganabouida, de ce genre de paix, pas du tout. C'était juste à cause que le discours qui est porté est quelque chose qui est vraiment comme pas euh, dans la commonalité de ce que les enfants sont habitués à entendre. Donc, dès qu'ils entendent ce son de paix, 
Il sait tout de suite que c'est quelque chose de... Ben, en fait, tout est lié à ça. Donc, le fait d'associer son nom à la paix était vraiment quelque chose comme quoi c'était juste une confirmation de c'est le bon chemin. Les enfants, il faut qu'ils écoutent et qu'ils entendent ce, ce, ce message-là. Puis, euh, ben, on a déjà hâte de main, là, que je vois les recevoir parce que c'est toujours aussi pour les meilleurs expériences. So we are really looking forward to uh, receiving tomorrow because it's always here that they can see it. And you know that right now uh, the kids like you are hypersensitive to uh, uh, to negative things. And so you know the kids are fully aware of the insanity in the world again that adults are pushing this world closer and closer to the brink of war once again. Now, if you're an adult, um, you know, quite possibly, you're not going to really be aware or be cognizant of how we are being pushed closer and closer to war. Si vous êtes un adulte, peut-être vous n'êtes pas tout à fait conscient du comment ou pourquoi ou en tout cas, on est en train de se faire pousser vers la guerre. You know that uh, adults are all basically becoming numb. Like our brains are numb. You can't feel anymore that when, when there is a, a threat of war, it's like the adults just shut down. But children, Their receptors are open wide and they feel all of this negative war insanity. C'est comme si les adultes, afin de pouvoir survivre dans cette folie, il faudrait qu'ils se réduisent dans leur qualité de vie et qu'ils soient comme acclimatisés à la guerre pour qu'ils puissent comme faire abstraction de toute la folie qui est autour des autres. Alors que, quand on en pense, et on le contraire, c'est comme si, parce qu'ils voient cette évidence-là, ils deviennent beaucoup plus sensibles et beaucoup plus alertes à toutes ces choses-là. But there are things, there's ways to gauge it. Uh, for instance, uh, look at the uh, automobile industry. Il y a des façons à le, comme le déterminer ou le mesurer. Là. Par exemple, si on regarde l'industrie du loto. You could always tell when war is coming by observing what types of cars are being used. You consider, like after World War II, when we came into this new witchcraft uh, of uh, uh, nuclear, the nuclear age. Well, join the, as we're coming into the Korean War, You can see how cars in the 50s uh, became more uh, uh, like applying to uh, people's vanity, applying to people's, uh, what would you call it, like uh, uh, leisure, leisure and uh, that kind of stuff. So you can see it. If you look historically at the times of the wars, you look at uh, correlated with the automobile industry, you can see in the early mid 50s, well, they had to keep the population uh, entertained or excited by the automobile industry. And then... Si nous regardons la, la pré-guerre dans les années 50, la population a dû être entretenue avec justement tous ces objets de vie sur l'industrie du loto. And then, as you know, like during the Vietnam War, you see how the muscle cars were unleashed upon uh, the society. Et après la guerre de Vietnam, vous pouvez voir que c'était les autos muscles qui étaient contre le loto libérés dans la société. And then if you, again, you correlate, you look at, well, the so-called, supposedly, the end of the Vietnam War was officially in 73. This is where you see the automobile industry taking a nosedive. And 
And then as you see the little um, uh, the little wards starting back like uh, uh, to around uh, the early 80s, you see the automobile industry coming back again, starting to make muscle cars again. Et là, il y a eu les petites guerres dans les années 80, mais là, du coup, vous voyez que l'industrie de l'auto commence à refaire des autos plus stylées. And if you follow that pattern, if you, if you uh, correlate those things, you'll see a pattern emerging, and you'll see right now the muscle cars that are being unleashed upon the public again are out of this world crazy amounts of horsepower, crazy amounts of speed, They always do this when they are coming into time of war. But when you see that there's things like this that they do to uh, uh, entice the adults, then you know you can also see there's things that affect the kids where the kids are more uh, become more hypersensitive. Donc, quand il euh, y a des choses comme ça qui vont être euh, euh, jetées aux adultes, vous pouvez voir que les enfants vont être sensibles à ça aussi parce qu'ils s'en aperçoivent de tout ce qui arrive dans les maison. So anyways, right now, we're very fortunate because we're getting to see all of this uh, with, uh, being exposed to the children. Uh, they're showing us what their fears are, what their uh, dreams are. It's just too bad. It is a goddamn crying shame that in the non-native world there is no mechanisms there for your children's voices to be heard. This is something that every adult should look at and consider about themselves because it's the world that you, as the adult, is unleashing upon their children. Okay, so anyways, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else on that you want to say. I don't know if anybody's got any questions or anything about that. If not, then we'll move on. Okay then. Uh, uh, okay, then I guess we'll go on if there is any carryovers from last week. Given that last week that we ended abruptly, I don't even recall now what we were talking about, what we were going to talk about, what was on the agenda. So if anybody has anything, you know, carryover from last week or as far as that goes, from the week before, now would be the time. Donc, étant donné que la semaine passée, on a vu terminer et que ça a été tout le monde, là, je me souviens même pas de ce qu'on a dit en train de parler en fait de ce Donc, s'il y a des gens qui auraient des questions, des commentaires, qui prenaient en tout cas, ça serait de la semaine précédente à ça, je dis en vous que. Uh, last week, just a reminder, Grace has asked to speak, but she said that she would postpone it, so I don't know if she would like to, uh, to speak. Uh, France uh, asked to speak, so uh, la parole est à France. Et juste pour vérifier aussi, uh, est-ce que c'est avec ça, parce que Jean-Marc t'a aussi demandé la parole, est-ce que c'est combiné ou tu veux la parole séparément, excuse-moi? I have something to talk about too, so I'll wait until France is Um, I just wanted to announce something, but I think it's not appropriate. I would suggest that if somebody has comments to say about what Stuart said, talk first, and then I could come back later for the announcement. Well, we already asked uh, if someone had comment for this. So you want to speak later, France? Well, Janet, do you want to comment on the subject? That Stuart just... Uh, what I want to comment on is not pertaining to what he just talked about, but it, it, what I want to talk about is a carryover that's been going on for a few weeks now 
and I would like to speak. I think that according to the protocol, Janet has to speak before me. What? <laughs> There's a there's no protocol like this. It's who asked to speak first, but now we, yeah, it's uh, Janet that needs to speak. Well, if friend wants to go, I don't. No, you, you go ahead, so. Janet. And uh, it's it disconnects. So I apologize. I cannot. I hear one word uh, out of maybe fifty percent. So go ahead. Let's see if we can hear you good. You hear all of a sudden my microphone is not working. Can people hear me? Now we can hear you. And if it cuts, you can always like uh, cut the, the image as we do. But for now, it seems to be OK. OK. So um, I've been trying to get to Kanawake, um, really having a hard time with transportation. Um, Cut off. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Janet, you're muted now. And I think that it would be better if you cut your image because it takes less juice. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yep. go ahead. Okay, so. Um, I, I just sent a um, notice to Angel and to Marie in the last couple of weeks. Um, I sent one to Angel tonight about showing up for the recital. And I don't understand what's going on. I'm being told I have to have a note. Donc, ce que je veux partager, uh, c'est quelque chose, en fait, j'ai envoyé un message à Angèle, j'ai envoyé aussi un message à Marie-Claude concernant le, le récit et que j'aurais besoin d'écrire une note, j'ai besoin d'une clarification. Hello? You still there, Janet? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, so uh, if I may, uh, I'm not sure. we cannot hear you, Janet, sorry. But I can give the details of that because we've been exchanging, yeah, on Facebook. Are you okay if I give you some details about it? No, I don't understand. I talked to you all of a sudden. I didn't have a problem all night until I made it clear to you guys, to you and Angel, I wanted to ask, why do I need a permission letter to go to the recital? Yeah, that's what I want to offer some clarification, Janet. If you let me, uh, I will offer those. So, Janet dit que uh, elle comprend pas pourquoi uh, ça prend une lettre pour aller au récit et uh, j'offre en fait uh, de clarifier la situation. So, as the people wanting to attend the recital is dealt with within the Bear Clan, we were told to send a letter that uh, explains what the Women's Nation is based on, the Women's Declaration, etc. So, uh, c'est le clan de l'ours qui est uh, responsable d'accueillir les gens qui sont intéressés à aller au récit uh, de la Loi de la Paix pour uh, la Nation des Femmes. Now, when you contacted me, that's quite a few weeks ago, Janet, I did send an email to you, but it was the general uh, email that we sent and I if I remember uh, I got the information from Stuart on how to address uh, you particularly but this is something we haven't checked so I sent you the general email of what a person wanting to participate in a recital does which is to write a, an in, not an intention letter we didn't really name that letter it's just to show uh, why you want to attend. So this is the general email that the Bear Clan has been instructed to send to anybody interested in attending the recital for the Constitution of the Women's Nation. Donc, uh, je, je t'ai envoyé là-dessus, Janet, il y a plusieurs semaines de ça, une lettre, en fait, c'est la, la lettre standard pour tout le monde uh, qui est intéressé uh, d'être au récit. 
Et cette, là, cette lettre-là, elle est standard, elle dit, par exemple, elle parle de la déclaration historique des femmes comme étant la première étape de la création de la nation des femmes, etc. Donc, il y a plusieurs liens. C'est un courriel qui avait été euh, euh, approuvé par euh, la nation des femmes. « This is an email that was approved with uh, the Women's Nation, by the way. » So now, where I need clarification, too, is that... Uh, Because Janet's point is that she doesn't need to write any letter because she's ongwe ongwe. And so we just need to clarify if she needs to write an intention letter as others were instructed to do. Donc, la seule chose ici à clarifier, c'est que est-ce que Janet, qui est ongwe ongwe, a besoin d'écrire une lettre comme les autres? Est-ce que c'est la même chose? Okay, let me, let me uh, clarify this. Okay, we have... By law, a law recital every five years. Donc, pour clarifier tout ceci, par loi, nous avons reçu de la loi à tous les cinq ans. Now, uh, we're having one this year because of a special request from the women that are forming the Women's Nation. Et nous avons reçu de la loi cette année parce que les femmes qui sont en train de former la Nation des Femmes ont fait une requête officielle. It's not with, it's not on the uh, regularly scheduled five-year basis. So since it is a special request, any non-native people who wish to attend, uh, excuse me, have to uh, be like uh, affirmed or verified through the Women's Nation. Donc, n'importe quelle personne de non autochtone qui souhaiterait y assister, eh, il faut qu'il passe par la procédure qui a été déterminée par la Nation des Femmes. Because it's basically, again, because of the Women's Nation. It's like their special request. Mm -hmm. Parce que c'est euh, la Nation des Femmes qui a fait la requête officielle. But, any person who is of the original peoples of Turtle Island Don't have to do that. Any person could attend outright. Just as if there is any non-native people who are our friends who have been working with us here in the Longhouse, then they also do not have to go through that channel. Because they would be coming in through the longhouse. Uh, so, uh, hopefully that clears it up. I think that makes it clear. Uh, Janet, uh, I know that you are uh, of the original people, so that does not apply to you. Alors, j'espère que cela clarifie la chose. Janet, on sait, toi, tu fais partie des peuples originaires de l'île de la future, alors cette procédure-là ne s'applique pas à toi. So, it is not an issue. Alors, il n'y a pas de question à rester de ça. The only thing is, like, the, the contact right now is through uh, Mary Code, as she is uh, 201 from the liaison force. La seule question qui demande, c'est que puisque c'est Mary Claude, la personne qui agit en tant que liaison wampum à du bois, And we're just too crazy busy over here, like to handle all of, uh, every little bit of information. So maybe it's just a minor, like a clerical error type of thing. <laughs> so uh, I hope that clears it up. That should be. Yeah. Right. Um. It, uh, thank you, Stuart, because I uh, I've been trying to tell a few women that I I am Uncle Hanley, and I do um. You know, speak some of the language, not a lot, but. I've been in mostly native communities for more than half my life. Um, and I have a clan, I belong to a clan. So I just kind of thought it was funny that I'm of a clan and yet I have to ask permission to join a clan. So that was, that was a, 
Donc, merci, c'est vrai que ça clarifie. Puis effectivement, que euh, dans le fond, j'ai essayé d'expliquer à quelques femmes que euh, j'étais ongoué, ongoué, puis que je j'avais un clan et que justement, ça m'apparaissait bizarre d'avoir à faire ce protocole-là. Euh, donc, euh, ça clarifie. So, I just want, you know, the people that, you know, I, 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 it, it's small, it's been corrected. I just want the women that I did speak to, um, to Messenger, to know that I am Dundiyankehak. I am Mohawk, if you want to call it Mohawk. I have a clan. I have ancestors from this land. Donc, je veux so, simplement dire euh, aux euh, femmes à qui j'ai parlé sur Messenger euh, que euh, je suis Gangangahaga, je parle également un peu la langue, j'ai un clan, je suis Mohawk. Right, right now, uh, just for everybody to understand the, the conditions. À ce moment-là, juste afin que tout le monde comprenne les conditions. Ah, oh, the circumstances, sorry. Tout ça, les circonstances. Is that, uh, like I said, here, I'm too busy, I, don't know, I can't even, I don't have time to yeah, eat something. I'm, I don't know what's going on, my, my screen's black, but it's a small error, and I just want to, you know, let people know that, you know, um, everything's fine, and I, um, you know, I'm not a band council member, I, I'm very, you know, grassroots, humble, if, you know, for English, I don't know how to say it, you know, in, except in English, you know, I, I'm not the monster, but, you know, I'm Uncle Holly, that's all. Bon. So donc, thank you, Stuart. Donc, simplement pour dire que, bon, c'était oui, effectivement, juste une petite erreur, ça a été clarifié, puis euh, je ne suis pas une personne des, des conseils de, bon, de banque, pas du tout, euh, je suis vraiment ongoué, ongoué, puis euh, merci à Stuart. Okay, uh, like I was saying, for information for everybody in general. Just comme j'étais en train de vous dire, pour que ça soit de l'information générale pour tout le monde. Because, uh, like I said, too busy over here. Sometimes I don't have time to even eat. Parce que comme uh, on est très occupé par ici, parfois je n'ai pas du temps pour manger. Uh, so, and, and on, uh, uh, on the other side of the wampum, Uh, Mary Claude, Angel, they're all learning right now also how the relations work. So sometimes we may uh, get rubbed the wrong way, we may not like what we're hearing. There, there is nobody with any bad intentions or trying to exclude anybody or anything like that. We're all like uh, babies learning how to walk within the order of the two row one. You know, when you consider that. Uh, There hasn't been this type of interaction, even just what we are having on, on the internet here, there hasn't been this type of interaction between the native and the non-native people. This uh, medium here, it's what we're doing, it's, it's basically like groundbreaking. And with any groundbreaking work, it's a live and learn. I know all the people here. I know uh, Mary Claude, I know Angel, uh, everybody. And I know that nobody is having any ill intents whatsoever. So if there is anybody else experiencing uh, what you just heard, or what Janet just said, you know, sometimes it's, the, it's like a knee-jerk reaction to say, well, I don't like this tiny little thing, so I'm not going to have anything to do with it. Parfois, parfois, ça prend juste une réaction comme ça, de dire, oh, mais j'aime pas ça, alors je vais 
You know, with anything good or worthwhile, it takes a lot of work. It would be good if it was like the lottery and it just plopped down everything we wanted and needed right in our lives. <laughs> but none of us gamble. So you know that it's going to be uh, the process we're going through is we're all learning how to be human again. And uh, it's going to take a while because we haven't been human for a very long time, for hundreds of years. So if there is, I know that maybe you become discouraged if you hit come into a little barrier. If, if anybody is watching this, and you're experiencing that, we'll say this is the medium in which to bring it out the same way that Janet just brought it out, so that it can be uh, resolved uh, in, in the public arena. So I think that answers or addresses your issue, Janet, unless there's something else. If there is, if not, then we'll move on to somebody else. Um, no, I, you answered my question and um, Yawa Goa, and I just want to say that um, you know, I apologize for any misunderstanding and, um, you know, I really appreciate everybody on Zoom. So, Donc, euh, oui, ça clarifie. Je te remercie, Sganagoa, euh, Stuart, puis je voulais aussi euh, clarifier qu'il n'y avait pas de mauvaise intention, puis que il euh, n'y a rien de, de sentiment négatif ou quoi que ce soit avec euh, les personnes qui font partie ici du Zoom. OK, well, no apologies necessary. If they're here in this arena, if anybody's going to apologize for anything, it'll be me. Il n'y a pas des excuses que tu as besoin de présenter. Là, s'il y avait quelqu'un qui aurait à présenter ses excuses, ça serait moi. And I'm not apologizing. <laughs> 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 OK. So. <laughs> OK. Yeah, what? Yeah. Donc, Jean-Marc, est-ce que tu voulais parler euh, maintenant? Excuse-moi, c'est quoi ça me prend du temps à, à réagir? Euh, non, le, 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 c'était pour réagir tantôt sur ce que Stuart disait. C'est pas, euh, pas aussi date maintenant. C'est pas quoi? Excuse-moi, je t'ai pas entendu. J'ai dit que c'était pour réagir sur ce que Stuart disait tantôt, mais c'est pas assez date. C'est pas assez date. OK. So, thank you, Jean-Marc. OK, Jean-Marc is going to speak uh, another time. Um, la parole est à maintenant Grace. I believe. Yeah. Grace, you can... Okay. Um, I don't know if I'll explain the whole dream that I had, and I've been hesitant even to share it. Donc, je ne sais pas si je vais partager tout le rêve que j'ai eu. J'ai même un peu hésité avant de le partager. So, maybe you can take what you can uh, get out of it. I have... I've studied my dreams for lots of years, and I I think this is a dream that is not just a dream for me, and it did have to do with the forming of the women's nation. Donc, tu peux prendre euh, ce que il y a à prendre de ce que je vais partager de mon de mon rêve. Ça fait des années moi que j'étudie mes rêves et puis que je les euh, explique. Donc, euh, et ça a directement euh, un lien avec euh, la nation des femmes. Um, I. I feel that before a lot of things happen here in the physical, they actually happen first in the dream worlds. Je, And, je suis certaine, moi, que avant que les choses arrivent ici euh, dans le plan physique, ils se produisent avant dans le monde de, des rêves. When I had this dream, it was when you had your first women's nation meeting, I believe. And it was at the new moon. I... Uh, <laughs> 
Okay. Quand j'ai fait euh, mon rêve, en fait, je crois que c'était en plein... Euh, euh, au premier, la première rencontre de la Nation des femmes, c'était la Nouvelle Lune. C'était tellement puissant. Je me suis réveillée à 11 heures le matin. I usually get up around five or six. Et normalement, je me lève à 5 ou 6 heures le matin. I don't know if I can explain the whole dream and unfortunately I didn't break it down but I do uh, write it down but I do remember it pretty vividly and there was a, a lot of people a lot more native uh, 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 native women who were speaking to a lot of people in the world Donc and, dans mon rêve il y avait beaucoup plus de femmes autochtones en fait et elles s'adressaient à beaucoup de gens euh, de partout dans le monde And also, uh, the young people, uh, a lot of the speakers were young women. What, uh, part of what I was doing in this dream was actually supporting a young man who was supporting a young woman speaking, and he was also speaking. Et il y avait vraiment beaucoup de jeunes femmes, et dans mon rêve, il y avait un homme qui, un jeune homme qui supportait une je, jeune femme qui voulait justement s'exprimer. So I think you will find young men will be interested in what you're teaching. Et je crois que tu vas trouver des jeunes euh, garçons qui seront intéressés, ils seront intéressés par euh, tes enseignements. And I think they're, they're going to want to help. Et je pense qu'ils vont vouloir aider. And so that's, that was the dream that I was going to share and that there is a lot of activity that just hasn't happened yet here, but there, this will get... Very well known. Donc, il y a beaucoup du rêve que je voudrais partager. Il y a beaucoup d'activités, en fait, qu'il y avait dans le, le rêve qui n'a pas encore eu lieu, mais je crois que ça va se réaliser. I was surprised this young man wanted me to be his support even when I was going to sit out in the audience. He was, come over and sit by me. I didn't even know what I was doing, but evidently I was some kind of support. Just to, dans just to be there. mon rêve, <laughs> Mon rêve, ce jeune homme-là, j'étais vraiment surprise qu'il venait me chercher, moi, dans l'audience pour que je puisse le supporter aussi à faire euh, ça, là, pour, pour euh, supporter cette jeune femme qui voulait supporter. Anyway, I think a lot of the young people, when they hear about the, this, the women's nation, the moon teachings, how creation really works here, are going to be very interested. And I really think it will take some young men explaining it to the other men and even maybe the older men, because I'll tell you, I hardly have any luck when I talk to men. They don't get it at all. Et je pense qu'il va y avoir beaucoup de jeunes garçons qui vont s'intéresser justement à la nation des femmes, aux enseignements de la lune, et puis euh, j'ai vraiment, moi, euh, une difficulté à l'exprimer justement aux hommes, mais je crois que ça sera les jeunes garçons qui vont pouvoir euh, l'exprimer à ces hommes plus vieux. And so that was the dream I was going to share. I didn't share all the details of it, but I, it, it was very powerful for me. I, I, I didn't really know anything about the moon or the moon teachings, but it really uh, affected me, even in not even being able to wake up from this dream. Donc c'était très puissant euh, comme rêve. Je n'avais pas encore été exposé aux enseignements euh, de la lune. Il y avait beaucoup de détails que je laisse de côté, euh, mais c'était un, un rêve vraiment, comme je dis, je, je me suis levée à 11 heures. Ça a eu un gros, gros impact sur moi. So that's all I really wanted to share. Et voilà ce que je voulais partager. Thank you, Grace. OK. Uh, very, uh, very interesting. Uh, we got to remember in all things about the inversion. When you're going out, left is on your left. But when you're coming in, left is on your right. So there's always an inversion, and we know the inversion is a reality because our eyes, being able to see things, inverts the image for our brain to uh, comprehend what we are observing. So 
This is why we say that whenever you're thinking about anything, if you got an opinion on anything, always entertain the exact opposite. C'est pour ça qu'on dit quand que vous avez une opinion, un avis sur n'importe quoi, ayez toujours le temps pour considérer l'opinion ou l'avis complètement opposé. And so when you're talking about the woman's nation, you're actually talking about the men. Because in order to have the woman's nation take place, you know that you have to have the woman's council for you. But as you know, it's been said enough here that the woman's council fire is not provided by the women, it's provided for by the men. No, it's not that uh, like we're creating it, it's that we have to provide the safe space in order for the woman's council fire to, uh, to exist. Ce n'est pas que nous le créons, mais que nous devons fournir l'espace sécuritaire pour que ce conseil des femmes puisse avoir lieu. So, for years, I've been saying, uh, I went on a walk uh, years ago across the country in 2015 uh, to bring the message for our people to return our mothers back to power now. Et pendant des années, moi je vous dis, je le répète, je suis même allé dans une marche autour du pays en 2015 pour dire que c'est le temps que nos mères reviennent à la position d'autorité qui leur paraissent. So the reality of that is, is the men have to do the work for that. Mais la réalité de ça, c'est que ce sont les hommes qui doivent faire le travail pour ça. Because in order for the women to be safe, or to feel safe enough, to feel secure enough, to be, to have the freedom to express yourself, especially in a political fashion, in a woman's council for you, you have to feel safe. And with the way the world is under male dominance, you just cannot feel safe. So the men have to work that out of us. Parce qu'afin que vous puissiez vous exprimer et avoir votre voix entendue en due forme, il faut que vous vous sentiez en sécurité. Puis dans le monde de, de la domination masculine, de cet espace-là n'existe tout simplement pas. Donc, ce sont les hommes qui doivent sortir en cette domination masculine de nous autres. So, to bring the uh, mothers back to power, <laughs> it's the men that have to change. Whatever the obstacles are that we're putting there that are preventing our mothers from being involved. Now, like you said, in the real world, you try to talk to men and they just can't understand what you're saying. It's like as if you're talking Martian to them. It's because anybody who is at the stage of manhood right now today, or I won't say manhood, but let's just say adulthood. They are already set in their male dominant ways. Sont déjà établis dans leur façon de la domination masculine. And their mind will just not listen to anything that is real. Et leur esprit va tout simplement pas écouter quoi que ce soit qui soit réel. And so when the women are speaking about love, the men are not going to listen. Alors quand les femmes parlent d'amour, les hommes ne vont pas vouloir entendre. Or, I won't call them men, I'll say the guys that are in adulthood. But a young guy says to you, come and sit by me. It shows you something that in order for you to get to woman's council fire, you have to guide those young men. Which in this world, you know, the young men aren't really uh, 
uh, designed or or manufactured in the proper way anymore. We're designed, manufactured to be abrasive towards women, to be adversarial. Dans ce monde, les jeunes hommes ne sont pas comme dans leur essence originale, dans le sens qu'ils sont comme préfabriqués pour être même violents, agressifs avec la femme. So just like what I seen with this young boy that I was talking about earlier, he was in our TP, it's like it's, he was channeling. Donc comme ce jeune garçon là dont on parlait tantôt, qui était assis au TP, qui s'était comme s'il était en train de canaliser quelque chose. Young boys, they want, they want, we want to please our mothers. We want to make our mothers happy. Les garçons, nous voulons plaire notre mère, nous voulons la rendre heureuse. But if all you're given is a gun, that's the only thing that the young boys end up knowing how to use. So they'll be screaming out for love, but they'll be physically uh, uh, representing war. Young boys do not want to go to war. These young boys that we talk to, they're 10 to 12 years old. They don't want to go to war. How is it that by the time somebody's 16 even, they want to get a gun in their hand, they want to go to war, they want to kill somebody else? You know that it's not what the mothers put into those young boys. Again, it's coming from adult males. All of the corruption that they're injecting into their minds. Again, through video games, movies, politics. À nouveau, ça vient de l'adulte corrompu mal, qui a toutes ces corruptions-là, des jeux vidéo, toute la guerre, la violence, la pression. And the number one gateway drug to war mentality is the schoolyard. Et la première porte d'entrée pour la mentalité de guerre est la, la cour d'école. And the kids don't want that. Les enfants, ils veulent pas ça. But again, it's all this that's injected to them. So this is where you see that you as a mother have to guide them. They want that guidance. They need it. In your dream, he's asking you, come sit next to me. But in reality, they might not have the, the, the wherewithal to even ask you that. It's something that you have to be able to see in them. <laughs> Il vient t'asseoir à côté de moi, mais il se peut qu'en réalité, ils n'ont même pas cette possibilité de te demander de l'aide. Donc, ça va être toi qui vas devoir les guider, ça va être toi qui vas devoir savoir comment nous approcher. So, because of the inversion, if we want love in the world, the women have to work on the young boys. You have to build men. Donc, à cause de l'inversion, les femmes doivent travailler avec les jeunes hommes aussi. And I'll tell you a reality of how we work. It may sound corrupt, but you know what? If you want us to do something, you know, you got to reward us. And not rewarding us by talking to our vanity as adults. You got to reward us by applying to what we were when we were children. We just spoke to, uh, who the heck did we speak to about this? Oh, uh, when we were at Mary Claude's, spoke to Mary Claude's mother about this. I think it was because of a dream also. Et on vient de parler à la maman de Marie-Claude, quand on était chez Marie-Claude, et je pense que c'était à cause de un rêve qu'elle a eu. Oui, c'était à cause de la guerre. C'était à cause d'un rêve, ok. Oh. Oh. What 
the heck did I say to her again? Uh, about the food, it was, uh, uh, she was... Um, mm -hmm. The woman's power is, you may think right now, right off the first response, you may think this is sexist or something. But the woman's power is to provide food, to cook. Donc, euh, il se peut que vous allez penser que ce que je dis est sexiste, mais la première chose et la première responsabilité que les femmes ont, c'est de cuisiner, faire la cuisine. What if you go back, if you regress to the youngest age of that baby boy, when he was just born, the first thing that you did for him was feed him. Parce que si vous revenez à la première chose que vous, en tant que mère, avez faite pour ce petit jeune garçon qui est né, c'est de le nourrir. So, uh, again, you may think this is sexist, but get back your woman's power. The true power of what that food is, it's not just the food, it is a medicine. Non, vous pouvez penser que c'est sexiste, mais non, revenez à votre vrai pouvoir de femme et donc faites à manger dans le sens que c'est de la médecine. So you think of, what did that little boy like when he was a little boy? What was his favorite thing that you would make for him? Donc, ce petit garçon, quand il était jeune, là comme ça, là, qu'est-ce qu'il aimait? I know what it was for me. It was cookies. Je sais c'était quoi pour moi, c'était des biscuits. So make that young man cookies. Put your medicine into it. Don't just put ingredients uh, that you buy off a shelf and uh, give him something to eat. Give him medicine. The more young men that you get to that point to go back when they were little boys, when they know that what they want to do is please their mothers, you will get them out of that male dominant mentality and you'll be able to start with a fresh, clean slate. Le plus que vous allez à cette période que il y avait ces jeunes garçons qui voulaient plaire à sa mère, le plus que vous allez être capable de travailler avec cette nouvelle comme page en So, within your own family, Within your extended family, within your community, within your nation, the mothers take back your power of that cooking medicine and start to provide that. Maybe uh, do once a week, provide the, the meal like that, the medicine for all those young men, and you're going to start to see a change. Donc, vous les femmes, dans votre famille, dans votre communauté, dans votre nation, redonnez cette médecine aux jeunes garçons, surtout. Donc, vous pouvez, par exemple, juste une fois par semaine, de cuisiner pour ces jeunes garçons-là, puis vous allez remarquer un changement. Make a gathering on your terms and conditions. All the men will come there to uh, uh, benefit from that experience. And then I'll guarantee you, right there, you're going to see that one part of your dream come true. Where that young man is going to see you and know, that's the mother that baked me cookies. Hey, come sit next to me. Because he gets his power from you. He gets a clearer vision from you. So uh, that is uh, one of the number one medicines. It is the first medicine that you have that you share with the men. Radio and for City's leaving already. Oh my goodness, we gotta say uh, have a good night, uh, bon week, the bar right. Donc Radio and City nous laisse déjà, donc on peut juste souhaiter à tout le monde une très bonne nuit. And uh, hopefully, Jean Marc, maybe we're gonna see you this week. Et en espérant, Jean Marc, de te voir cette fin de semaine peut-être. We have, as you know, the Cory cleanup and then the woman's. Uh, Thing coming up for starting Wednesday. Nous avons le nouvel de la carrière ce samedi 17 
So overall, one week is all right. <laughs> That's for Radio Info City. Okay, so yeah, uh, I think I finished that. Mm -hmm. Did it sound normal if I finished that? Yeah. I think I finished with that. So, is there anything else to add? Do you have anything? Add something, Grace? Ah, you're muted. Yeah, yeah, I, I, um, no, that was wonderful. Uh, now I, I know what I need to do. Cooking medicine. So, I'll have fun with that. <laughs> C'est merveilleux, merci beaucoup. Je sais maintenant ce que je vais faire. Ouh, je vais euh, cuisiner ma médecine puis je vais avoir du fun à le faire. <laughs> Thank you, Grace. La parole est à France. So, hi everybody. Uh, like Stuart said, we have to, we should always pre uh, present ourselves. So, my name is France, for those who don't know me yet. And my mother was Giselle. And uh, her mother was Angelina. Bon. And Bonsoir tout le monde, je suis France et comme Stuart nous l'indique, il faut euh, se présenter. Donc, je, mon nom est France, ma mère était Gisèle et euh, ma grand-mère était Angelina. Something I want to clarify that I never said uh, very often, and I think it, it directly to Stuart, is my mother's uh, maiden name was Garin and her mother was a Loiselle. Donc, quelque chose que j'ai toujours voulu dire à uh, Stuart, c'est que le nom de famille de ma mère, c'était Garin. Et ma grand-mère, c'était Loiselle. Yeah, because often I refer to the Loiselle because they were the ones that installed themselves when they came from across the Great Water to Sault Saint Louis de Kanawake. Donc, je réfère souvent à euh, Loiselle, en fait, parce que c'est eux qui sont venus euh, de l'autre côté des grandes eaux, des, des grandes eaux, pardon, et ils se sont installés euh, à Saint. Excuse-moi, c'est quoi le nom de la place? Sault Saint Louis de Kanawake. Voilà, à Sault Saint Louis de Ganamwagi. And um, but um, um, I, I'm very touched tonight by everything I've heard. Uh, the story of that child that you mentioned really um, shook my heart, and um, everything that I've heard. Ça a coupé. Excuse-moi, France. Le dernier mot que tu as dit, c'est quoi? J'ai juste dit uh, tout ce que j'ai entendu. Everything Donc, tout ce que j'ai entendu ce soir m'a vraiment touché, euh, vraiment, les échanges, c'était vraiment euh, super. Et, um, uh, what I wanted to say, I postponed it because I wanted to say that we have for the law recital, we have to organize a Zoom session. Donc, ce que je voulais dire, c'est que pour le récit de la loi, on doit euh, organiser, en fait, une session Zoom. For the technical aspect, and Radio Info City wants to know who does what, so we cover everything regarding to uh, everything that could occur from the beginning, hopefully up to the end. Donc, pour tous les aspects techniques, en fait, durant euh, le récit, savoir ben, qui filme, etc., pour qu'on puisse euh, le préparer d'avance, puis savoir euh, qui va faire quoi. So we invite whoever wants to participate, even if it's the most little things that you think that it would not help us, because maybe you don't know what it is to hold a camera or anything. Don't worry, there's always a technical thing you could do. So if you're interested, just contact me in private or whoever doesn't have my uh, information, you can ask everyone here on the Zoom, uh, they know how to contact me. Et donc, euh, on fait appel à n'importe qui qui veut euh, aider, même si vous pensez que vous ne pouvez pas aider. Il y a toujours un petit accès technique que vous pouvez faire, tenir une caméra ou quoi que ce soit. Donc, vous pouvez me contacter. Euh, si vous n'avez pas mes coordonnées, ben, tout le monde les connaît. Donc, euh, simplement contacter une personne présente ici qui va vous mettre en contact avec moi. So, I know that Radio Info City is, is gone, but maybe Jean-Marc... Jean um... Uh, is still hearing us, but I was going to ask when would be the best time to do that because we do have to do this now soon. It should have been done like last week. Et donc Jean-Marc vient de quitter, le Radio Info City vient de quitter, uh, mais uh, j'aimerais quand même qu'on essaie de mettre une date à l'agenda parce que ça aurait dû se faire uh, la semaine passée, là. I mean, we should have started a long time ago, but I mean, at least, you know, 
whoever wants to be a part of this, no matter how you could do it, uh, I mean, it would be amazed to have uh, pictures and stories, even if it's not necessarily located in, in Ganawage, maybe the law recital that we are about to start, it's for me an historical event. Donc, euh, ce serait vraiment le fun d'avoir des images ou des vidéos de ça, euh, même si ce n'est pas physiquement à Ganawagé, mais euh, c'est euh, un, un événement historique, je considère personnellement, là, ce récit de la Grande Voie de la Paix. Et je sais que je ne suis pas la seule qui voit ça comme un événement historique. Je pense qu'il y a des gens de l'autre monde qui voient ça comme un événement historique. Et je sais que je ne suis pas la seule à voir ça comme étant un, un événement historique. Il y a beaucoup, beaucoup de gens qui le voient comme ça aussi. So, you know, this thing might trigger something across the world, then they could send us what it does to them, and we could incorporate that in a big documentary, and it would be fun for the posterity to watch. Puis, on pourrait même inclure des gens partout dans le monde qui pourraient partager justement euh, sur leur expérience du récit, comme ça va être public, puis faire une espèce de, de documentaire euh, de tout ça. So you could imagine that to do this and to go all this way, to be so widely covering the event, everybody has to pay, take part of this. And I just want to, uh, you know, try to... Uh, comment on dit ça? Donc, gérer le trafic, you know? Uh, deal with the traffic. Yeah. I, <laughs> donc, <I, laughs> donc c'est vraiment plus qu'on on, on peut rendre ça disponible à, à plein de gens. Ben, après ça, ben, c'est certain qu'il va y avoir beaucoup de gens qui vont être interpellés. Puis là, ça va être une question de gérer le trafic. So, Radio et is ready to do this, but, you know, there's like different... Echo everywhere. Some people from Radio Info State don't know the people from um, the people that here that want to participate and use their equipment and all this. So this, if we re all gather in the Zoom session, then this could be solved very fast. Et Radio Info Cité, en fait, sont prêts à faire ça. Puis je sais qu'il y en a d'autres. Fait que tu sais, il faudrait euh, juste euh, pouvoir mettre tout ça ensemble, pouvoir gérer pour avoir le plus d'impact possible. So I see that uh, Jean-Marc is there. I don't know if Jean-Marc would like to co uh, comment on this and add the, if, did I forget something? Donc, je vois que Jean-Marc est là. Est-ce que tu voudrais uh, commenter ou ajouter quelque chose, Jean-Marc? You're muted. Mon, mon habitude d'être muté. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, that basically the, uh, the, idea, the thing I start doing... Uh, Since physically I cannot be always there uh, for that, uh, already, uh, and uh, I know that uh, Angel proposed me uh, to uh, lend her uh, a camera if, uh, if I have, uh, have availability for the camera. I know the. Uh, Donc, je ne peux pas être là physiquement à tous les jours. Il y a Angel qui m'a demandé si uh, je pouvais lui prêter une caméra, puis elle pouvait avoir la caméra sur place. Uh, that uh, it will be uh, uh, fixed uh, uh, this week with uh, everybody who, uh, who wear a land already equipments. Uh, we have a couple of uh, HD camera available. Um, I'm, I already asked everybody to uh, bring me back all the camera. So I'm, I must be, able, I will be able to uh, land camera to uh, Angel. Uh, for, Ça sera possible pour moi de prêter, en fait, une caméra à Angèle. J'ai demandé à rapatrier plusieurs des, euh, des équipements, justement, ici. Donc, ça sera possible d'avoir une caméra fixe euh, durant le récit. Exactly. And, um, and for, the, uh, for the, the big equipment, like the 4K camera and, uh, and so on, that I don't know yet uh, what is the schedule for availability. I know we have uh, two or three shows to record uh, next weekend and the weekend after. So I don't know what would be the availability for those equipments. Et uh, pour les caméras plus uh, de très haute qualité, uh, là il y a un horaire parce que je sais qu'il y a déjà uh, des événements qui sont uh, à l'agenda et uh, donc cette, cette caméra là va être uh, mob mobilisée pour ça. Mais il faut que je sache en fait les horaires puis je vous reviens là-dessus. That's it. Thank you, Jean-Marc. <coughs> um, so. Um... I know that there's other things that I'm 
that, that just crossed my mind and I lost it, uh, but um, if we get a Zoom session, then all, all of these things would be clarified. So uh, uh, Jean-Marc, you didn't tell me your, uh, your, your time frame of your disponibility for the Zoom session. Donc, euh, comme on, je disais, il euh, y a des choses qui m'échappent. Je vais avoir besoin des disponibilités de Jean-Marc. Euh, mais euh, dans le fond, je pense qu'avec un Zoom, on réglerait toute l'affaire en un seul Zoom. Jeudi soir, samedi, euh, samedi en après-midi. Euh, Thursday night, Saturday afternoon. So, Thursday night, it's out of the question because there's a Ganyangehaga class, the Ganyangeha class. And hey, Stuart, I was able to pronounce... Donc, le jeudi soir, c'est impossible parce que c'est le cours de Gangangeha. Puis en passant, Stuart, je suis capable de prononcer la grande voix de la paix en Gangangeha, la Gangangeha Sera Goa. Yeah! <rire> so, Saturday is good. Donc, samedi, ce serait correct. Sauf, sauf s'il y a un événement euh, euh, chez euh, Stuart euh, qu'on pourrait peut-être aller se déplacer là-bas. Except if there is an event uh, in Ganawagi Saturday. Yeah, we're having the quarry cleanup on Saturday. That's the lake that's right in front of my house. It used to be a quarry. They, they stopped uh, production there in 73 and it filled up. Now it's a big, beautiful lake. We've been cleaning it up for 25 years now. This is the 25th year that I've been organizing it and cleaning it up. So it's this Saturday. Oui, donc c'est samedi, il y a justement le nettoyage de la carrière. Il y avait une ancienne carrière à graver la pierre qui était là devant chez nous. Puis là, du coup, ils ont touché la nappe phréatique, ça commençait à se remplir. Donc là, c'est devenu un lac. Et là, c'est la 25e année qu'on fait le nettoyage à Cotonier samedi, mois de juillet. Donc, on a, samedi, il est occupé dans ça. But uh, don't let that be a deterrent for you because myself, I would be really useless at that particular Zoom. Uh, for everything else that's happening during the recital, you know, I already got my hands full. So stuff like the other things which you're going to discuss that really, I really don't need to be there for that. So if you can do it on Saturday, Go ahead, I'm going to be busy here with the, the cleanup of the lake. Donc, uh, pour d'autres choses, dans le récit de la loi, j'ai déjà les mains pleines, donc uh, je peux vraiment pas m'occuper de la faire d'autre plus que ça, là. Donc, si vous voulez justement vous rencontrer samedi, ben allez-y, là, puis euh, moi, je pourrais pas être là. And, as all of you know, uh, if you are, uh, if you have been here, then you have benefited from that lake right in front of my house. You have enjoyed the beauty, you have swam in it, you have, swam in it. You have uh, just sat there and enjoyed how beautiful it is. So it is, as you know, very important for me to be able to uh, uh, organize and be here and manage the, the cleanup of it. Et comme vous le savez, si vous êtes déjà venu à un lac, il est tellement beau, vous avez profité de ça, dans le sens où vous êtes assis, vous vous êtes baigné dans la carrière, donc vous savez comment c'est important pour vous. So, if you can do it on Saturday, uh, you should go ahead and do it. Donc, si vous pouvez le faire, ça va être le résultat. Um. I just wanted to say, uh, Jean-Marc, that if you want to go to cover the quarry cleanup, you can still do the Zoom wherever you are because you just need the link to be on the Zoom session. Donc, je veux juste dire à Jean-Marc, s'il va être là pour le nettoyage de la carrière, en fait, tu peux aussi faire le Zoom à cet endroit-là parce que tu as juste besoin d'un code, en fait. Exactly what I was going to say. Uh, whatever. I just, I, I thought after, after I... I I talk, you know, and you're talking too fast sometimes. You know. yeah. like Donc, c'est exactement ce que je voulais dire. Close the door. Euh, euh, Là-dessus, euh, excusez, là, il y a quelqu'un qui est venu, je ne sais pas trop, il y a une histoire à l'extérieur. Désolé. Répète-moi ça, Jean-Marc. Je vais le répéter moi-même en français. Je okay, disais juste que j'ai parlé, parlé trop vite, puis c'était ça que j'avais dans l'esprit. C'est Peu importe où est-ce que ça va avoir lieu, je suis capable de me brancher avec mon équipement, mon téléphone. Excellent. Donc, 
pas un problème. Uh, thank you. Merci Because uh, I don't know, uh, Jean-Marc, but for Radio Info City, it must be very important that there's something like that that it's done in Ganawagi that a lot of people are gathering to clean up the quarry. Donc, je pense que pour Radio Info City, c'est très vraiment important d'être là parce qu'il y a beaucoup de gens de Ganawagi qui participent au nettoyage. So, c'était c'était l'idée. Mm. So anyway, so Marie Claude, uh, you just have to create the Zoom. I guess it's you or Angel that can create the Zoom and just send us uh, an email. Donc Marie Claude, uh, je pense que c'est toi qui t'occupe de gérer les Zoom. Donc est-ce que tu pourrais uh, uh, créer le code Zoom puis nous l'envoyer s'il vous plaît? Uh, can you send me an email with the exact time and I will send that uh, to you, uh, France, as a reminder so I don't forget. Donc, okay. Juste... Ooh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. Well, is uh, there another? Okay, then. Donc, euh, l'idée, la suggestion d'Angèle, c'est euh, de s'organiser pour les horaires euh, par courriel puis euh, pouvoir fixer ça. Uh, it, would be, it would be good if you can add uh, uh, Jean-Marc to the Trello and we can create a card there because there's a lot of things. Yeah. Euh, si tu pouvais apporter, euh, ajouter en fait Jean-Marc Jean sur euh, Trello, puis on pourrait ajouter un tableau euh, là. Because a lot of things that I talk to Jean-Marc is on the card already, so he can probably check if there's things that, that he can help to provide and stuff. Parce qu'il y a beaucoup de choses sur les cartes qui sont déjà là, puis il pourrait aussi jeter un œil puis voir ben, s'il y a une façon d'aider. Mm. So if you do that, uh, then then I'll see it there. I'll see it on the email. Thank you, everybody, and keep up uh, the good work. And I can't believe everything I've heard tonight. It was very deeply touching. Everybody was very in their heart, and I love that. Donc merci beaucoup pour ce soir. J'étais vraiment très touchée par les partages, spécialement euh, ce soir. Donc merci pour tout le beau travail qui se fait. Merci, France. La parole est à la maison longue. Okay. Uh, well, I was going to talk about the, uh, the cleanup this weekend, but we already talked about it. Um, there was, last week, as you know, when we got cut off, there was some things that were very pressing, very important that we had to talk about. But uh, I completely forgot about <laughs> So, if there is anything anybody's got, now's the time to bring it up. If not, it looks like we can have an early night tonight. Okay. Uh, uh, just as you said that, uh, France has to speak. La parole est à France. Uh, something I want to, I would like uh, the Longhouse uh, Steward to clarify is all this thing that we often hear about. Uh, keep uh, keep paddling, uh, go with the flow. And for the people that don't understand that, I would like. I was wondering if you could just mention a little something with this. Donc, il y a une petite clarification que j'aimerais que Stuart apporte parce qu'il y a beaucoup de références qui, euh, que Stuart dit qu'on doit, euh, en fait, se concentrer sur notre pagaie euh, ou aller avec le flot et tout ça. Puis, euh, pour certaines personnes, ça peut être un peu euh, euh, mélangeant. Donc, j'aimerais qu'il offre une petite euh, clarification. OK. I'll, I'll refer once again to the ceremony that we had earlier this evening with... Uh... Uh, with Elizabeth. There's a lot of uh, things that we said to her that she had to do to acclimatize herself to this polarity. We just heard a noise of the horizontal 
Oh, okay. Uh, and one of them was allowing yourself to be in the flow, to be in the vein of things. Et une de ces choses-là, c'était justement de se laisser aller couler d'eau avec le, le flot des choses. Anybody can say, yeah, that's what I do. Et tout le monde peut dire, c'est ça ce que je fais. But it's not really true. C'est pas si vrai que ça. Because everybody goes into whatever it is they're doing with a preconceived set of notions or ideas or agenda. Mais tout le monde va dans les choses qu'ils font avec déjà toute une question prédéterminée, en fait, une série de questions prédéterminées de ce qu'ils qu veulent, c'est quoi leur ordre du jeu. Et si il n'y a pas, alors tout ce qui peut arriver, les gens vont déjà avoir un set de mindset, un train de thought de comment gérer les choses. Et les gens vont déjà avoir d'emblée une façon de comment aborder les choses. And the moment that you do that, you're out of the flow. Et dès le moment que vous faites ça, vous êtes déjà plus dans le flow. The world is too used to thinking that I'm going to decide and I'm going to do something based on what I decide. Et le monde est trop habitué à penser que ben, je vais décider, donc je vais faire ceci pour décider. Instead of waking up in the morning and giving thanks, for this life creation has given you and to allow the day to guide you. That's being in the flow. À la place de se lever le matin puis remercier pour ce vie que la création vous a donné puis avec ce remerciement-là du matin, aller justement en tout l'an de tout le monde de la journée. And basically to allow your day and whatever is happening in there to, uh, to guide you, to teach you to uh, allow it to uh, uh, to form you. It's, it's you evolving. De telle sorte de permettre de tout ce qui va vous arriver de vous modeler et de vous faire évoluer. I'll give you a, one of the best examples I can think of. Je vous donne un des meilleurs exemples que je puis penser. Is what happened the day my father died. C'est passé la journée que mon père est décédé. Uh, some of you know like what what we went through that day. Some of you don't. But uh, the day my father died, uh, I may it may have seemed to everybody that I made decisions, but I really did not make a single decision that day. Pour cette journée, je pourrais vous dire que je n'ai pas fait aucune décision, même si vous pourriez dire que j'ai fait. Uh, first off, uh, of course, very different day for me because my father died. D'abord, une journée très différente pour moi parce que mon père vient de décider. But my father and I had a way of, uh, of existing in this world. Et mon père et moi avions une façon d'être dans le monde. And the two of us were like intertwined in that way. Like uh, during the day, uh, somebody would show up with a tree and uh, we would have to plant it and we would discuss where we're going to plant the tree. We may have thought, oh, we'll plant it over there, but we go on the land and we let the land tell us where we're going to plant that tree. So anyways, him and I were like this all our lives together. But that day, it's like as if one side of my brain was gone. Like I was only, no, I only had one side of my brain left. Mais cette journée-là, c'est comme si euh, une moitié de mon cerveau était comme là. Là, j'étais juste avec un côté du cerveau. And so, it was a hard day and uh, I was borderline of, of uh, deciding. Donc, c'était une journée difficile et euh, j'étais comme à la limite là, de capable de décider. But I resisted that. Mais j'ai comme, euh, en fait, j'ai résisté à cette volonté de décider. And as much as it may look like I decided when I told Edith, go get the car 
and pull up right there. Et aussi, euh, comment que ça pourrait avoir l'air que j'ai décidé, quand j'ai dit à Edith, vas-y chercher la voiture. But it wasn't me that decided. C'était pas moi qui décidais. It was the circumstances of the flow that I was in. C'était les circonstances du flow dans lequel je me trouvais. So, it's the best example I can think of for myself as to how to be in the flow. C'est le meilleur exemple que je peux donner à ce que je peux dire de comment être justement dans ce flow-là. Uh, it's a very thin line, like a soap bubble, that you have to break through in order to be free, to allow the day to guide you. C'est comme une ligne très mince, là, comme si c'était une boule à savon, là, comme de te permettre que ça soit la journée qui va qui if I would have went by my own uh, decisions, my decisions would be based on always, well, uh, I got to put food on the table, I got to do this, I got to do that. Would have ended up in my own decisions. I would not be where I am today. We would not be exposed, uh, uh, sharing, teaching of children. I would not be there. I would still be an iron worker making the decision of how I'm going to put food on the table. Si j'avais continué avec, euh, ben là, il faut que je mette la nourriture sur la table, il faut que je fasse de l'argent, euh, on ne serait pas à stade au school, mais en train de donner les enseignements aux enfants, je serais encore un travailleur d'assis. But how I allowed the flow to guide me is through the ceremonies. Mais comment que j'ai permis que ce soit le flow qui me guide, c'est grâce aux cérémonies. First off, uh, some of you know the story about when in um, 1982, when uh, as an iron worker, I was sent out to the Palo Verde nuclear power plant in just outside of Phoenix. It is there that I allowed the flow to say, Stuart, you're not working on a nuclear power plant. C'est là que j'ai permis à ce club-là qui me dise Stuart, tu ne vas pas travailler dans une usine. Because my own decision was I got to put food on the table, I got to put gas in my car, I got to have this stereo, I got to have this TV, I got to do whatever. It takes money. I would have made the decision to stay working, to work on a nuclear power. Parce que ma décision était de là, il faut que je mette du gaz dans mon champ, il faut que je mette de la nourriture sur la table, il faut que je fatigue et ça, donc il faut que je continue à travailler même si je suis dans une usine de terre. But it's because of the ceremonies that said, no, nope, not working on a nuclear power plant, I was compelled, I could not make the decision myself, I had no choice, no way I could work on a nuclear power plant. C'est grâce aux cérémonies que j'ai pu dire que and then as I uh, as time went on, some of you know that I had my own business here on the property. It was an outdoor adventure thing. I was making a lot of money at it. I was doing really good providing for my family. Every weekend I had bus loads, two, three bus loads of people coming down from uh, the city, from Chinatown, uh, coming down to utilize my, my training course. And if I would have decided, I would have decided to keep that money flowing. But my business was interfering with the ceremonies, was interfering with the real business, this longhouse business. So I had to abandon that business. I gave it up. I had to stop that business, which was very lucrative for me. I had to stop it. It was the flow that showed me. I can't keep doing that. Donc, il a fallu que j'arrête mon entreprise, malgré que c'était très lucratif. Il a fallu que je suis de flow et que je dise que je n'ai rien. 
Uh, it's just as it was when we stood against the casino. Because, you know, if we had a casino, we could be rich. But the floor told me no. De la même façon qu'on s'est levé debout pour dire non au casino. Parce que c'est sûr, il y a un casino qui arrive, il va avoir beaucoup d'argent qui peut entrer, mais on a dit non. So anybody can say, yeah, they know how to go with the flow, but being brave enough to live up to that and make those decisions, it is the hardest thing in the world to go with the natural flow of things. Everybody knows that. The whole world knows. It's the hardest thing in the world to live naturally. Everybody's going against it. So to go with the flow is really like uh, for the current modern day mindset, it's like a blind leap of faith. You have to be really rooted into that creation, into that flow. And the only way to do that is through the ceremonies. So to get in the flow of not making a decision, allowing creation to make the decisions for you, is ironically or paradoxically rooted in you first making the decision to go with the ceremonies, to make yourself live the ceremony. C'est paradoxalement que vous preniez d'abord consciemment la décision de vivre par des cérémonies, que ce soit des cérémonies que vous faites. And so, to go with the flow is, of course, the thing that we all have to do. Et donc, aller avec le flow, c'est sûr que c'est ça qu'il faut faire pour tout le monde. Because to go with the flow is to go with the river, the river of life. Ça veut dire, ça va avec la rivière de la vie. And according to law, you are never supposed to go against you go to the river to get a drink, you put your cup with the current, you go with the flow. But think about this. Be cognizant of this. Everybody goes to the river, and if the river is flowing this way, they'll cup their hands, they'll put their hands like this, and they'll pick it up. Because it seems like the natural thing to do, because the water just will naturally flow into your hand. When you do that, you are stopping it. You're not going with it. You're actually interfering with it. So to put your hands, if the river is flowing this way, to put your hands in the water and go like that is to go with the flow. You are not disrupting it. You are allowing the day to make your decision for you. And when it gets hard, because we all know it gets hard. We're tricked into making a decision. So when it gets hard, this is when we identify to lean into your paddle. Now, those of you who are going to attend the law recital, you're going to hear next week about how in the formation of the League of Peace, that leaning into your paddle was what made the difference between the people being in war or going with the flow of peace. Qu'est-ce qui a fait de la différence entre les gens qui avaient pour la paix et les gens qui sont restés en guerre? 
Because in life, what, what forces us all the time, every day, forces us to make a decision where we normally wouldn't. It's because of these things that we see that are influencing us. Oh, this is, it's, it's almost five o'clock. You got to make a decision. The business day is almost done. Et c'est parce que quand que on fait des décisions, c'est qu'on se fait influencer par toutes ces choses qui vous obligent à prendre ces décisions-là. Donc, dans, oh, il y a presque ce qui est arrivé cinq heures. Donc, la journée d'affaires finit pour faire la décision. That's a decision made in haste. And any decision made in haste is a wrong decision. Donc, n'importe quelle décision qui se fait en hâte est une décision erronée. And so, to lean in your paddle is to, like, if you're actually physically paddling a canoe, to lean into it means to put all your energy to focus on where you are going. And when you're leaning into it, your head is down. So you are not seeing all these false things that are falsely influencing. Et donc, de retourner votre corps sur le pagaie, ça veut dire que vous allez continuer à utiliser tout votre temps comme ça pour empêcher, en fait, que votre concentration va, se, va être sur ce mouvement-là. Pour que dans ce mouvement, vous n'ayez pas à vous distraire par tout ce qui est autour qui veut vous influencer. So whenever you're having a hard time, such as this, like what we're talking about, Donc, si vous avez un temps difficile, comme est-ce qu'on parle, just tell yourself, lean into your car. Just dit pour vous-même, recline-toi sur ton pagaie. Go with the flow. Et va avec le flow. <laughs> And things, guaranteed, it may sound crazy, but they're going to work out naturally the way that they are supposed to. Of course, this doesn't mean just let any old thing happen. It doesn't, they're not implying that. But from within law, for a man, it is men that have made these wrong decisions that puts this world in the screwed up position that that the whole world is in now. Just think of that. For 2,000 years, over 2,000 years, every male has been making tiny little incremental uh, wrong decisions throughout the day. Because they are forced. And it's turned the world into this pile of garbage that it's turned into now. So really where a man uh, uh, separates where He's going with the flow, but he just doesn't allow anything out at all to happen. Is where he puts his life himself into the hands of his mother. The mother will never guide us wrong. Everything, every decision, no matter what she does, it's going to be with our best. Uh, with the best intentions for us. So, this is how we we don't sweat the small stuff and we can very easily handle the big stuff. You have heard me say many times, those of you that have been close here, you know that this work, it may be the hardest work, but it's the most fun. It's the most rewarding. I just play all day long doing this. It may be the hardest job. Le travail est plus dur, mais c'est le plus euh, fun. Donc, moi, je m'amuse juste euh, tout au long de la journée. As you know, some of the things that we discuss with some of the people we discuss, yeah, we come into contact with some very important uh, people, some very important organizations, some very important nations, even. 
Et comme vous le savez, les gens avec qui on interagit, ce sont des gens, des organisations au niveau euh, international, des de nations même. Là. We deal with things of really, when you think of it, of worldwide importance, uh, of things that are outside of the scope of our expertise. Et on fait affaire à des choses qui sont au niveau bon, euh, mondial et qui sont complètement à l'extérieur de notre domaine d'expertise. Et tout ce que nous faisons, c'est vraiment de jouer notre chemin à travers ça. Et nous avons du fun à le faire. Où tout le monde doit passer 10 ans à obtenir un PhD ou 10 lettres derrière leur nom et vivre dans une rat race et devenir des gens pour devenir. So-called well-off, where for us, we're just playing. Alors que tout le monde doit avoir 10 ans pour devenir un doctorant, pour avoir 10 lettres d'intention derrière eux, pour pouvoir arriver à comme, vivre bien, alors que pour nous, c'est juste comme euh, une joute simple. Because that's the way my mother designed. Parce que c'est ça la façon dont ma mère l'a dit. She didn't bring me in a world to where I'm going to be enslaved. He brought me into a world where I can play. And while I'm playing, handle the serious business that the rest of the world can't even handle. And my mother bakes me cookies. So it's always good. Always fun. That's being in the flow. That's leaning into your power. And so, uh, if unless there's something else, we're going to lean into our paddle, into that fun now. <laughs> Thank you very much, Stuart. This was a very eloquent answer. Merci, Stuart, pour cette réponse éloquente. Um, I had a very uh, nice uh, thing that happened this afternoon. I just talked about it to Marie-Claude before the registration. Donc, il y a quelque chose qui uh, m'est arrivé ce, cet après-midi. J'en ai parlé avec uh, Marie-Claude. C'est vraiment quelque chose à noter. What happened is, uh, you know, across this, uh, our building here, there's another one that, that is exactly the same. De l'autre côté, il y a un building qui est exactement le même qu'ici. And uh, about two years ago, they started some work, you know, uh, like they just rearranged the whole thing. Il y a deux ans, ils ont tout réarrangé, ils ont fait des travaux. And uh, there was some very rare bird there. They, they're called Pérégrine Falcon. Et il y a des uh, oiseaux très rares qui s'appellent les faucons pèlerins qui ont uh, fait uh, leur uh, maison là. And we, we had fun every springtime, and every time the baby came, they tried to show them how to fly, and it was just amazing. But during the work, they, they were gone. They didn't come back for two years. Et à chaque printemps, on aimait beaucoup ça parce qu'on les regardait, les petits bébés qui allaient voler des, du nid, qui allaient apprendre à voler, mais durant la construction, ben, il n'y avait pas de nid, évidemment. I was scared that they were gone forever, and you know, But recently, just like a week ago, I started to hear their, their scream, you know, and I was looking like, where are they? Where are they? Et j'avais peur qu'ils soient partis pour toujours, mais il y a une semaine, j'ai commencé à entendre à nouveau leur cri, puis je me demandais, ouais, où est-ce qu'ils sont? And although it's very hard for me to run, I mean, I had to just look, where are they? I couldn't find them. I mean, I heard them. Et euh, même si c'est pour moi de courir, je regardais, voyons, où est-ce qu'ils sont? Je les ai entendus, ils sont où? Ils sont où? I thought I was coming, I was starting to come crazier than I am. J'ai eu uh, un doute que j'étais encore plus folle que je, que je suis. But guess what? Just before the Zoom, about 50 minutes before the Zoom session. Donc, juste avant le Zoom ce soir. I was like just watering my plants on the balconies. Je donnais de l'eau à mes plantes sur mon balcon. And then, I thought, it, I think it's the female that went by like this. Ooh, just next to my, almost next to my face, about five feet away from me. La femelle a passé uh, juste à côté de mon visage, à peu près à cinq pieds de mon visage. And she went like that. She went, she did all kinds of stuff. She, she was like 
making me a show. And I was like, oh my God. And I talked to my husband, come and see, there, 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 there. And he was busy on the phone, so he missed it. But anyway, I, I, I saw, she went all the way up to the nest. They have a nest all the way up there. Donc, j'ai essayé de ramener mon mari qui était au téléphone, mais il n'était pas disponible. Puis, j'ai vu la femelle qui s'est en, en allée jusqu'en haut, jusqu'à son nid. And then the male just flew like this. Et, Et le mâle s'est laissé tomber, puis il a redescendu comme ça. And, then, and, and they all sang or, or they made noises the whole time they were doing that dance. Puis, il y avait plein de cris là, pendant qu'ils faisaient toute cette danse-là. Oh my God, you don't know what it did to me. It was like such a relief. They were back and I Et saw them. tellement soulagé de voir qu'ils étaient de retour. Ça m'a tellement fait plaisir. And I think it, 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 it's an answer for me for things that I felt because I haven't been really able to, to join you to do everything that needs to be done for the recital. Et pour moi, c'était comme une, ré une réponse parce qu'évidemment, je ne suis pas euh, en train de m'affairer comme tout le monde pour la préparation du récit. I wish I could. <rire> J'aimerais pouvoir le faire. And, uh, but I'm there in spirit. Mais je suis là en esprit. And when the, they finished their dance, I just ran to get my, my, my iPad. I wanted to film them. I thought they were doing this for a while. J'ai essayé de les attraper, là, ben, en fait, l'image avec mon iPad. J'ai couru chercher mon iPad. And it took me, I tell you, it took me about 30 seconds to get it. Ça a dû me prendre 30, 30 secondes. But when I went to film it, they had stopped. Mais quand j'ai voulu les filmer, ça, ça l'a arrêté. So I realized they, they were just coming to tell me a message. Donc j'ai réalisé qu'ils étaient là juste pour me dire un message pour moi. And I think this message is... We are on the right track. Et je pense que ce message-là, c'est de dire on est sur la bonne voie. Because they are back. Parce qu'ils sont de retour. Yeah. Merci, France. OK. If there is nothing else, then uh, we're going to close. Donc, s'il n'y a rien d'autre, on va pouvoir fermer. OK. Uh, next week, we're, for, if anybody's wondering, because the recital starts on Wednesday, if anybody's wondering if we were gonna, what's going to happen with the Zoom, we're still going to do the Zoom 7 o'clock next Wednesday. Donc, la semaine prochaine, mercredi, en fait, prochain, nous commençons le récit de la loi. Et s'il y en a qui se demandent si on va voir euh, le Zoom, la réponse est oui. And uh, as much as possible of it, I don't know exactly, whatever, anyways, uh, we're going to try to uh, Facebook live as much of the uh, recital as possible. Et uh, je sais pas à quel degré, mais on va essayer de faire un Facebook live le récit de la loi aussi, le plus possible. And then, uh, the last, like, like we said before, the last time we did it, it took 26 days. Et comme on a dit la dernière fois qu'on l'a fait, ça a pris 26 jours. So uh, I really can't imagine anybody sitting there for 26 days watching a video on something. <laughs> It's really the kind of thing that you have to live <laughs> to, to experience it. So, uh, okay, there you have it. Uh, we're going to close then. And, uh, we, Every day, you know, we're posting stuff, whatever it is we're doing. Uh, there's stuff that I need to, uh, I don't know, did you already post it? Yeah. There's stuff that's posted from what we did today with the kids. And then tomorrow, the kids are going to be here. Uh, tomorrow is going to be another really mind-blowing day because the last two days working with these kids, they're all super excited, all hyped up about coming here tomorrow. Et donc, il euh, euh, y a des choses qu'on poste à chaque jour, euh, de ce qu'on fait quand on travaille avec les enfants. Demain, on va les accueillir ici, puis c'est sûr qu'on a déjà hâte de les recevoir parce que les deux jours qu'on a déjà travaillé avec eux, ils sont super motivés et enthousiastes à nous venir. Là, donc, c'est sûr que ça va être une autre fête. Donc, there you have it. We're going to close. Donc, on va fermer.
ما که تنها نیا بگو کنم و دانم نم و استاد نه گذشتن های آن دیگه نیبلیو هایی، ادیتیتی تیستا سوپوس کورا کسیان دان ماست این ماتیس که فرانچیتا فرانچیت کرولا، دبازه می هم تاگی مشی کام و نریستا، یه نتایج می هم استادیس آن دان هایی دان استادیس نه که می ده حالا دنیا پاکی، دیگه می هم تاگی نم و نریستا آن دان هایی، دیگه می هم ولاد دو کلمه که ریا گسل دان هایی که سوتا سنت نت کرلا پر دنیا پیستایی می هم تاگی دان هایی گوشت می هم می هم یتی نوراد و تنها نوراد و دانش آموز کرده، تیمی تنها خطر گیرو، آباد و اونو تصور کند و نوراد و آباد شده. نتیجه تو رو نتایجی نیم را دیس کرده و اگر این کیا تغییر هم داد و ارم هت سلام نی آواه کت سمتیا و دانو آواه کوادت شده نی آواه نی هم سعی دانو آواه اون و اون و. یتی نوراد و چپونسی سر دان دکان آویده و دانو آواه بیانه و دانو بیانه نی آواه 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 نی آ این پیاده گن ها دان داور هم هت سران دیگه سه سان سران دیگونوه دانو به دانوان دانو سه سان سران دیگونوه دانو سانه دانو سه سان سران دانو کاری با ولیشن سران دانو نگه تن دیگر داشت. هر سال. این زمان. هر سال. تو گنی نیو تنسوانی کرد. ای بای آنک. آنا. بای سا. Das ist ein Dios! Das ist ein Dios! Das ist ein Dios! Das ist ein Dream!